So this is the uh, Wikipedia entry on Laura. Um, it's Laura from Long Range, uh, and basically the the whole the whole thing with Laura is that it's found a way to do some clever uh, transmitting that allows it to send data over a very long um, distance, but it the trade off is um, how much information it can send. So it can either be like really, really easy to pick up or it can send like a decent amount of data and you can, it's either one end of the spectrum or the other. So getting into LoRa used to be pretty difficult. You needed to, you know, get a, a board or something that was like 20, 30, 40, $50. Um, and even the cheapest boards were like 20 bucks. So I've been interested in this in a really long time and um, I wanted to actually give it a try myself. So. I decided to get a couple of different boards and report back to you about which ones are working and how they work. So you can't really see them, see them, but I have two different devices on my desk currently. Here's one of them. This is the first LoRa board that I got plugged into a USB nugget. And um, the USB nugget is basically controlling um, and interpreting signals from the LoRa board. This is the cheapest LoRa board I could find. And as you can see, it's turning red. And every time it turns red, it's actually receiving a LoRa signal from, well, honestly, like uh, three feet away on the other side of the table. So this was my um, first attempt at hooking up a LoRa board to an existing microcontroller and just using it. And this board um, is available for, I think, around like $5 or so. You can get it as cheap as like $3 on AliExpress. From the United States, it's a little bit more. Um, it's maybe around like $20 for a pair of them. Um, which is quite expensive for a microcontroller, but you can find them online and these are the cheapest ones. So let me go through these ones first. This one uses an SPI connection in order to interface with the chip and um, then it can send and receive messages and everything's good. So if we're using like Arduino for this, then there's actually a really excellent guide already out here. And that is random nerd tutorials. I will say my antenna um, is pathetic. Um, I think it might be the antenna that's the problem. Um, the wire length depends on the frequency. So for me, I'm broadcasting at 915 megahertz, which is 3.22 inches. Um, I thought I cut this relatively precisely, but as I said, I was getting a really, really bad uh, kind of connection. So um, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really 100% sure that this was uh, what uh, I was supposed to do in terms of like the correct length. Once you have one of these boards connected to uh, a breadboard, I went ahead and used a breadboard breakout by Aria. Um, so where, where'd my nugget go here? So this is basically a little board that plugs into the back of the nugget and then sticks out onto the breadboard so I can wire everything up. And there is just enough room on this mini breadboard to wire everything together. So I actually just did a write-up and shared my code for this. And I made a couple different prototypes and I wanna uh, talk about what they do. So um, the first prototype that I made, my very first prototype was just something that would change the NeoPixel color um, every time it received a message. So in this case, I believe every time it turns red, yep, there we go, it's it's receiving the message. And that was pretty simple. So then because the Nugget also has a screen, I decided I also wanted to print out the message that was received onto the screen on both devices. So both the transmitter and the receiver should both like turn on, um, output a message on the screen, and then you know send. I have all of the different code that I used here. And one of, um, one of the prototypes that I made was a automated transmitter. So that's what's currently running right now. And it is basically sending a hello with a increment number over and over and over. Now, what, what is this useful for, for? Well, for me, it's very useful for being able to determine the range. So I can travel a distance and I can see which one of these were received and if there were any messages missed um, in the sequence that I'm expecting. I am using um, serialterminal.com. Uh, in order to connect to both of these nuggets live on the show. Um, and from serialterminal.com, I clicked on connect and then I connected to the transmitter and I can see that I'm sending packets. And the whole time that I've been on the show, this has been sending these automated beacons and then having them received on the other side. So the code side of this looks like sending packet and then it appends the counter number uh, and then hello it sends them and then uh, it turns off the NeoPixel and try and goes around and, and does it all over again. So pretty pretty simple loop here. It's just sending the same packet over and over. And on the receiver side, over here, I have the receiver is also connected um, to my computer via serialterminal.com. And I can see that it is receiving all these packets. And generally, the signal strength is uh, like a, a lower 
number is better. So negative 50. Um, I bet if I move this over closer to the transmitter, I could get that to go down even. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move this over so it's right next to the transmitter. And let's see if the next packet is closer. Yes, it is closer. OK, cool. So we can see that moving the transmitter has a effect on the actual um, on the actual signal strength that we're observing. Um, and that's pretty consistent. So that's cool. So we can use this again to, to see all sorts of things, like especially being able to uh, detect like when we're about to go out of range. I was seeing um, like garbled messages also. And sending along the hello is nice because towards the end of the range of this thing, which is about a quarter of a mile in the current setup, not super impressive. Um, I was just getting like garbled packets and the hello was just a string of like weird characters. Um, so um, kind of interesting there.